The Zulu Kingdom, located in what is now South Africa, emerged as a dominant force in the early 19th century under the leadership of Shaka Zulu. Shaka, who became chief of the Zulu clan in 1816, was a brilliant military strategist and innovator. He reorganized the Zulu army, introducing new tactics and weapons, such as the Ikolwa, a short stabbing spear. Shaka's reforms transformed the Zulu from a small clan into a powerful kingdom capable of defeating larger and more established adversaries. His reign was marked by a series of military campaigns that expanded the Zulu territory and brought numerous tribes under his control. However, Shaka's reign also brought about great social upheaval and violence, as his military conquests often resulted in the destruction of entire communities. The Zulu kingdom continued to grow and consolidate power after Shaka's assassination in 1828. His half-brother, Dingane, succeeded him and ruled until 1840, followed by Mpande, who reigned until 1872. Under Mpande, the Zulu maintained a degree of stability and continued to assert their dominance in the region. By the 1870s, the Zulu Kingdom was one of the most formidable military powers in southern Africa. However, this period of relative peace and prosperity was soon to be disrupted by the encroaching interests of the British Empire. The discovery of diamonds in the 1860s and 1870s intensified British interest in southern Africa. The British sought to expand their influence and control over the region, which inevitably brought them into conflict with the Zulu. In 1878, the British High Commissioner for Southern Africa, Sir Bartle Frere, issued an ultimatum to the Zulu King, Quechuayo, demanding that he disband his army and accept British authority. Quechuayo, proud of his kingdom's independence and military strength, refused the ultimatum. This refusal set the stage for the Anglo-Zulu War of 1879. The war began in January 1879, when a British force led by Lieutenant General Frederick Thesiger, Lord Chelmsford, invaded Zululand. The British were confident in their superior weaponry and training, expecting a swift victory. However, the Zulu, under the command of experienced leaders like Nchingwayo Kamahol and Mavu Mengwana Kandlela, proved to be formidable opponents. The first major engagement of the war took place at Isandlwana on January 22, 1879. In a stunning and humiliating defeat for the British, the Zulu army overwhelmed and annihilated a British column, killing over 1,300 soldiers. This battle remains one of the worst defeats ever suffered by a British army at the hands of indigenous forces. Despite this early success, the Zulu were unable to sustain their resistance against the technologically superior British forces. Following the disaster at Isandlwana, the British regrouped and launched a series of retaliatory attacks. One of the most famous incidents during the war was the defense of Rourke's Drift, where a small garrison of around 150 British soldiers successfully repelled repeated attacks by a much larger Zulu force. The battle, which took place on January 22nd, 23, 1879, saw the British defenders awarded 11 Victoria Crosses, the highest military decoration for valor in the British Army. The British, now reinforced and determined to avenge their earlier defeat, continued their campaign against the Zulu. They employed scorched earth tactics, burning Zulu crops and villages to weaken their resistance. The decisive battle of the war took place at Ulundi on July 4, 1879. In a pitched battle, the British, using their artillery and Gatling guns to devastating effect, defeated the main Zulu army. Following this defeat, the Zulu capital of Ulundi was captured and burned, effectively ending the war. The aftermath of the Anglo-Zulu War saw the dismantling of the Zulu Kingdom. King Quechuayo was captured and exiled, and Zululand was divided into several smaller chieftainships under British control. This fragmentation weakened the Zulu's political and military power, and they were never again able to pose a significant threat to British colonial ambitions in southern Africa. 
Quechuayo was eventually allowed to return to Zululand in 1883, but he found his kingdom in disarray and his power greatly diminished. He died in 1884, and the once mighty Zulu kingdom faded into history as a British colony. The legacy of the Zulu kingdom and the Anglo-Zulu War remains significant in South African history. The war highlighted the Zulus' military prowess and their fierce resistance against colonial domination. It also exposed the vulnerabilities and overconfidence of the British Empire. Today, the Zulu people remember their kingdom's past glories and the bravery of their ancestors with pride, while historians and enthusiasts continue to study the war's complex causes and dramatic events. I've been sitting at the edge for too long Told myself I couldn't, but I knew they were wrong There's a fire burning deep in my soul I'm not just surviving, I'm aiming for gold I'll break through the walls, I'll tear down the chains Push past the limits, no holding the reins I got a vision and it's clear in my mind There's no turning back, I'm leaving fear behind I'm beyond the limits, no more staying low Every step I take, watch how far I'll go This guy's not the end, I'm reaching for more I'm breaking through, I'm ready to soar oh. 